humble mug. So I recently went on a trip to Peru with my family. We saw Machu Picchu and other famous landmarks, learned a lot about Peruvian history, and we did a lot of hiking. But this is a gaming channel and you've come to hear about games, right? Okay, so let's get all of that out of the way and get back to the good stuff. So I was stuck trying to decide which games to bring with me on my trip because there were so many that I wanted to play. I decided why not ask you guys what I should play. So I took out nine games from my Switch library for everyone to pick between. The games were Astral Chain, Digimon Cyber Sleuth, Ghostbusters Remastered, Live Alive, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Metroid Dread, Pikmin 4, Xenoblade Chronicles, and then I decided to go ahead and throw in Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom as well because, to be honest, I was already playing that game and enjoying it a lot. So with all of these games in hand and a big decision ahead, I decided to make a community post on YouTube, I asked some friends in private, and also asked my Twitter followers. Community posts on YouTube don't always reach everyone though, and I only had like 32 Twitter followers at the time, and I'm pretty sure 28 of those were just OnlyFans bot accounts, so I really didn't get a lot of responses from there. Follow me on Twitter if you like what I do, by the way. But the platform that really pulled through for me was Reddit. I posted on both r slash Switch and r slash Casual Nintendo asking which two of the nine games I should play. Between both posts, I got over 300 upvotes and nearly 200 comments, plus the responses I got from other sources. This was going to be a lot to sift through, but I was really excited to see what people had to say. First off, you guys didn't let me down. Three people recommended totally different games that weren't even on the list, so we'll go ahead and throw one vote up for Mega Man 11, Diablo 3, and Persona 5. Someone else recommended that I read the Bible, which is probably good advice because I am a bit of a heathen. Another thing that really surprised me here was that every single game got some level of support. I thought for sure that Ghostbusters, Monster Boy, and Live Alive were going to go overlooked, but much to my surprise, they all got some representation, and Live Alive actually did better than Marvel and Digimon. So really quick before I get to the results, I had one thing I wanted to explain really quickly. This might be a little controversial, but I ended up not deciding the winner based on upvotes. This was initially what I was going to do, but as the responses started to come in, I noticed two things. First, unless a new comment comes along that is just drastically better than all the others, or that first comment was just way off base, the first comment usually reflects the most popular opinion and it just gets upvoted to oblivion because, let's be honest, it's easier to upvote than it is to take the time to actually talk about something. The top comment on the Switch subreddit, for example, was the first comment made on the thread and it stayed at the top the entire time. And nothing against this commenter, but all they said was, uh, Metroid or Pikmin, I don't know. And I just, I don't know, I just didn't vibe with that. In contrast, the second thing I noticed was that as the responses were pouring in, I saw that there were some really passionate people who really cared about some of these smaller titles and wanted them to get their chance in the spotlight. I knew that if I just counted upvotes, my decision would have been made for me from the get-go. Metroid Dread, Pikmin 4, or Xenoblade Chronicles would be the clear winner and it wouldn't even be close. So to spice things up for all of us and make it a little more fun, I decided to instead tally up all the comments I received. Though I know this frustrated some people, and it might even frustrate you as you're watching this, this method gave the smaller titles a fighting chance of being chosen. And we all love a good underdog story, right? Plus, it's my poll, so... Whatever! I do what I want! So these were the final results at the time I stopped taking submissions, which was basically right before I had to finish packing everything up for the trip. Metroid Dread still had a big lead and easily earned first place, even when it was just based on the number of comments. But the most surprising thing for me was that through this new methodology, there was actually a tie between Pikmin 4 and Astral Chain. Again, I love a good underdog story, I saw so much love for Astral Chain, and I have also already played a couple hours of Pikmin 4 already, so I decided that a blind playthrough of Astral Chain would be more interesting. Before I begin telling you what I thought of these games, if there's a game on this list you think I should play next, or if you want me to give Pikmin 4 some justice, please let me know down below in the comments. If I get enough responses, I might make a follow-up video on this, it just kind of depends on how interested you guys are. So Metroid won the fan vote by far, so I had to play that first. But I sometimes get a little apprehensive about playing games that everyone seems to love. What if I don't like it as much? If the game doesn't connect with me like it seems to with everyone else, I sometimes feel like there's something wrong with me or that I'm missing something. Well, I'm so pleased to say that my god is Metroid Dread fantastic. Even just based on my first impressions, I can tell that this game is one of the best on the Switch, and if it's your personal favorite on the system, I can totally respect that and see why. I was hooked from the very beginning. It combines some of the, well, dread, I'm sure you've not heard that joke before, that you would feel from games like Super Metroid that had those strong horror elements, with the spectacle and pizzazz of something like the Prime series. And I've heard that it takes some mechanics from Metroid Samus Returns on the 3DS, and now I've really gotta play that one. 
No spoilers here, but Metroid Dread definitely deserves its name. I've gotten so much anxiety running from the Emmys. I had already heard that they were scary, but I didn't really know why until now. I basically felt like I was playing A Quiet Place the game. In space, I guess. You see, these machines can basically hear your movements, and they will find you and hunt you down. Running away from them is as thrilling as it is scary. The environments in this game are superb. There were a few moments where I just had to stop and take a screenshot, as I'm sure many of you did because it was just so beautiful. I think the pacing of the game is absolutely spot on too and probably one of its best strengths. You go from exploring, to avoiding an Emmy, to a boss fight, to finding an unlockable upgrade, to then possibly going back to hunt down the Emmy yourself, and there's just this constant stream of upward momentum that keeps things interesting. I also have to really praise this game for not giving me the common upgrades like the Morph Ball right off the bat, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I think the different abilities you get in this game rule. It's got some tough moments, as I died to the Emmys and some bosses more than I expected, but it never felt unfair. The game also requires you to be a little more precise with your aiming, since the Switch's joystick has more range of movement than the d-pad based aiming that we've seen in earlier Metroid titles which adds a bit to the difficulty too I'd say. However the controls are so tight that once you get into the rhythm of smacking your opponents around with your arm cannon, shooting their weak points and sliding underneath them Mega Man style to avoid an attack it just feels right. And I know that the game's soundtrack gets a lot of flack and yeah well nothing has blown me away yet and the tracks mostly seem to be rehashes of songs we've all heard before. Those songs are iconic for a reason and the game still has a lot of tension thanks to its music. One thing I will say though related to the game's audio is that I love the beefy sound design. Especially with headphones on or a good sound system, you'll hear these deep futuristic bass drops and a nice distortion on a lot of the sound effects, and it's extremely reminiscent of Doom Eternal sound design in my opinion. I think it really fits the tone of the Metroid universe and I'm so glad that they went in this direction. Metroid Dread honestly doesn't feel like a Nintendo game, which I know might sound strange to you, but it's probably the highest compliment that I can give here because Metroid has always been this beautiful black sheep amongst Nintendo's IPs, and I'm just thankful that Nintendo is still willing to keep Metroid scary and unnerving. Metroid Dread absolutely lives up to the hype and I have no doubt it will cement itself as one of the best games in the series in my mind as I play more. I played this game on all of my flights taking me into Peru, and I would play it non-stop until my Switch died every single time. So as you can guess, I played Astral Chain on my flights back to the States. By the way, really quick, I wanted to share this, and I, I am in no way sponsored by Power A, the company who makes this bag, but I had to say that this thing was perfect for my trip. I was able to fit my Switch, my PlayStation Vita, my 2DS, and my Power Block all inside this bag. I think I got it at GameStop for like 20 bucks, so if you're looking for a Switch bag, I'd highly recommend it. Okay, let's move on to Astral Chain. So my first time experiencing Astral Chain was a different story than my first time experiencing Metroid Dread, but it was still a positive one, don't get me wrong. Astral Chain was a game that kind of grew on me more and more with time, whereas with Metroid Dread I was hooked from the get go. And though I kept my mind as open as I could, it's hard for just about any game to follow behind a Metroid game so I'm sure that colored my experience a little bit here and there. With that said, the opening cinematics and overall presentation of Astral Chain from minute one was just spectacular, and I think I would probably enjoy a whole game built around this arcade style motorcycle vehicle chase minigame that you find yourself in in the beginning. And I can't stress it enough, Astral Chain is one of the best looking games on the Switch, if not one of the best looking games that I've played this year, which is remarkable considering that this game is 5 years old at the time of this recording. And sometimes cyberpunk aesthetics can feel a little overdone nowadays, but games that can pull them off manage to really stand out from the pack and Astral Chain is for sure one of those games. The reason that the game didn't immediately hook me though was due to its controls and general gameplay during those first couple of hours. To be honest, and maybe it's just me, the controls felt a little weird at first and I felt kind of limited in my moveset considering that I was controlling two characters at once. But don't worry, if you're playing this game for the first time and feel the same way that I did, just keep going and the game will start to click. As you get further and further in the game, you get more abilities and the controls really start to make sense as the game begins to open up to you more. Now, I've never played anything by Platinum Games except for Mad World way back in 2009, which, you know, I need to change that. But I'm well aware of their bigger titles like the Bayonetta series, Nier Automata, and Metal Gear Rising. And apparently Platinum Games did actually do some work on Grand Blue Fantasy Relink before eventually parting ways with side games, so I guess I played more Platinum Games stuff than I thought. But this is all to say, I know Platinum Games is a developer of a certain pedigree. 
So I had some expectations going into Astral Chain and overall it did not disappoint. By the way, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink was so much fun for me. If you're looking for a review of that game, I've got one right here for you. In Astral Chain, you're a young cop in a futuristic city that's being invaded by interdimensional beings. You've got to conduct investigations on these mysterious happenings while also controlling your own interdimensional beings called legions. The legions are what you'll use to fight these other beasts that have invaded our world. You send your legion out to attack with you and carefully manage its abilities and cooldowns to fight efficiently while also getting in on the action yourself with guns and batons and beam swords. Play the game correctly and you can use the astral chain to tie enemies up or throw them on the ground and as you get further in the game you get to control other legions. The most common criticism that I see for this game is in its investigation segments, but I actually really enjoyed these, and having a bit of a break sometimes from all of the action sequences was nice for me. Not to mention that Astral Chain's world feels very fleshed out. I enjoyed running around the police headquarters as well, so much so that I pretty much already explored everything in there before the game decided it was time to take me on a guided tour in the next chapter. Oops. Astral Chain has some awesome down-tuned heavy metal tracks during the fight sequences and super chill catchy music playing in other areas and I won't spoil it for you but this game has some really cool locations that you explore during your investigations. One of the areas that I explored in particular and you probably know what I'm talking about if you've played the game literally just made my jaw drop because of the scope and size of it. I just wasn't expecting it because it was so much bigger than the other areas that I explored so far in the game. This game takes a lot of obvious inspiration from goaded classic anime like like Akira and Neon Genesis Evangelion, but if you want some slightly more modern anime comparisons, the Legion Companions reminded me a lot of the Black Ghosts in the anime Ajin, and the design of the Astral Plane was like a darker version of Code Lyoko's Digital World, funnily enough. Like I said, Astral Chain took a second to gel with me, but once I got to File 4 especially, which is basically the fourth level in the game, it finally clicked and I was having a blast. Just like with Metroid Dread, I intend to finish this game and I can't wait to see how the rest of the game continues to subvert my expectations. I would say I put about 5-10 to 10 hours into both of these games during my plane rides. It's sort of hard to track exactly the amount of game time spent on the Switch in comparison to something like Steam, but I had a great experience playing both games. So really quick I just wanted to throw this out there too. As I mentioned earlier, I was talking about my Power A bag, so I wanted to throw these guys in here too. I also brought my 2DS and my PlayStation Vita, and it was my Vita that I chose to bring along with me during our adventures throughout Peru. I actually managed to play and beat Ease Chronicles 1, which was a PSP remake of the original Ease Book 1 from the PC Engine. This was my introduction to the Ease series, and this version of the game got the seal of approval from the Happy Console Gamer, who is probably the biggest Ease fan I know, so I knew I was in for a good time. I had so much fun traveling that world, fighting monsters, getting stronger, and learning the secrets of the books of Ease as Adol. Ease Chronicles also comes with their remake of Ease 2, which I can't wait to play as well. After my Switch died on the plane, my go-to device was the 2DS, and there I mostly played Fantasy Life. It's such a charming and relaxing game, and it was a great way to take a break from all the action and tension that I found in Metroid Dread and Astral Chain. All in all, I'm grateful for all of these devices, and I'm thankful for all the responses I received that led to me trying some really great games. Again, if there's anything else from this list of Switch games, or anything else in general that you think is a must play that I just have to try next, absolutely let me know in the comments. I read every comment I get. I can't wait to see what the next adventure is that you guys take me on. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.